your physical asset register. The requirement under the standard is to have a register of all of the physical assets of the organization that either store, process or transmit data and information. For a physical asset register we are looking at devices and routers and switches and wireless access points. We're looking at laptops and PCs and servers. We're looking at virtual servers and virtual environments. We're looking at anything like remote storage devices, anything that can store, process or transmit data. What we're not looking at or overly concerned with are assets like monitors, uh, keyboards, mice, desks. This asset register is the bare minimum that would be required. It isn't a requirement to populate this register if the ex information exists already. If you already have the information and it exists within a system, an asset management system, some kind of Microsoft or Azure or Google system, then just record somewhere the link to it so that you can evidence that you have a complete list of assets with certain key control information around them. As you can see from this asset register, in the absence of that, we are going to record our serial number. We're going to assign our assets to an owner as a requirement of the standard. We're going to dictate and say whether it's in use, the date that it was designed, assigned to that person, the date that it was returned. We're going to record a date when it was last checked. So when we're looking at devices, they need to be checked for certain controls such as encryption, antivirus, patching so we're going to record when they when it was last checked and who checked it again those systems if they exist may have that information in them already antivirus systems uh, microsoft and intune is very good at reporting out uh, statuses of devices so it may well be that you have the information and you're not required then to populate it into this template but in the absence of that you would use this template you're going to record when it was checked and who it was checked by provide a description of what the asset is and what the asset does. So is it an email server? Is it a laptop for a sales presentation? Is it a removable storage for backup? What, what does that asset do? And then we want to know what data is held on it. We're looking at buckets of data. Is it sales data, CRM data, employee data, payroll data, general email communication data? What data is held on that asset? Or, or transmitted through it or processed on it. Then we're going to record the importance. Now what we mean by importance is how important is that asset to your organization where high is it's fundamentally critical and low is your business could operate without it. If we're considering things like a domain controller or an email server then we would class that potentially as high importance. If we had a sales laptop then we would class that as low importance. Our business could continue to operate with, um, without a sales laptop. Then we're going to classify that device based on confidential, internal or public. Now the classification is the classification of the highest level of data on that device. If that device has even one piece of confidential data then the entire device is classified as confidential. We're going to record the location of the asset. Again, just some. it could be um, something very specific or something generic but we want to know the location of the asset and then we're going to record some notes as appropriate. This is going to be your first pass through as a physical asset register. Understanding the assets is probably one of the most time consuming activities that we see an organization undergo. But in here we want every device listed, again including virtual devices if you have a virtual server environment or we want to have a link in here to where that information exists. We can't control what we don't know, so first of all we need to know what we have and then we can control it. So that's your physical asset register.